everyone welcome back to another video today we are going to discuss about a question from csi net june 23 examination that is the latest exam about kinetic isotopic effect so this is now one of the favorite questions of examiners uh, i think it did come earlier like in 2015 2016 2017 but then for two or three years you did not see these questions in the uh, competitive exams but now again you can see that they have been frequently asked so it is not just important for csi net but for gate and for your even i think iit jam as well and all the other indian competitive entrance examinations so the concept of kinetic isotopic effect is something that we are not going to discuss in detail in this video we are primarily going to focus on this particular question but in case you are interested i will give you the link to this video so this is very well received i had made it about you can see three years ago and here i have explained the concept in detail anyway coming back to this question so the question says uh, that among the following reactions where do you see the kinetic isotopic effect now just to give you a very brief idea what is this uh, deuterium kinet primary kinetic isotopic effect it is nothing but the rate difference that is the rate difference between kh and kd that means if we have if we replace the hydrogen with a deuterium then what is the rate of the reaction basically that is what it measures and if there's a significant difference in the rate of the reaction we say that a kinetic isotopic effect is taking place or a non-zero non kinetic isotopic effect is seen in simple terms if your carbon hydrogen bond breakage is the rate determining step okay then we can say that the kinetic isotopic effect has taken place this is the most simplest explanation that i can give you that if your breakage of the carbon hydrogen bond is the rate determining step because the carbon hydrogen bond is easier easier to break as compared to the carbon deuterium bond and why is it so all the concepts i've explained in the video that i earlier told you about anyway coming back to this question so you can see that in option number b there is no significant uh alteration of the carbon hydrogen bond basically it's a electrocyclic ring opening reaction what is going to happen this bond over here is going to move like this and this is going to move like this so this is electrocyclic ring opening of your cyclobutene and the carbon hydrogen bond breakage is not going to take place so either if you had hydrogen over here or you had deuterium over here there would be no change in the rate of the reaction so definitely in this case the prim primary kinetic isotopic effect is not going to take place so you can cancel this out but most importantly you can also cancel out option number one because it says a and b and you can also cancel out option number two which is b and c now please remember this this is very important from for competitive examinations because i have said this multiple times before as well <clears throat> that you do not have to prove yourself or you do not have to test yourself in the competitive exam you have to be quick so among option number a and c whichever you feel more comfortable solving you solve one of them okay wherever you are more confident and then if it is if it is the prime if let's say primary kinetic isotopic effect is taking place over here you're confident you don't have to solve for c you move on in later on if you have time for revision then you can cross verify whether in c primary kinetic isotopic effect is taking place or not okay so let's go with option number a over here it looks to be a very simple straightforward name reaction that is your claisen rearrangement okay so what is going to happen over here basically you can do the labeling one two three one two three this is going to migrate like this and this bond is going to cleave like this so this is what is going to happen this is your claisen rearrangement so what is the intermediate that we are going to get the intermediate that we will get will look something like this right this is our intermediate <clears throat> and then you have a hydrogen or a deuterium over here now what is the next step the next step is if i show you with a different color <coughs> this bond over here breaks and the <coughs> and basically the aromaticity of the molecule is regained now please remember that whenever the aromaticity of the molecule is regained it is not the rate determining step because this is going to be a very very quick process right it will be very very quick this molecule will quickly like to regain its aromaticity so that means this carbon hydrogen bond breakage is not the rate determining step and if it is not the rate determining step that means the primary kinetic isotopic effect will not take place over here so this is also incorrect that means our correct answer is option number c but since i'm explaining you about the concept let's go ahead and solve this option number c as well 
so this is nothing but decarboxylation of beta keto acids okay this is a beta keto acid okay beta keto acid why is it called so because at the alpha carbon we have the acid and at the beta carbon we have a ketone group so it's called a beta keto acid so the decarboxylation is taking place now this is a very interesting question and i i am very happy whoever the examiner is they have given a really good and a solid question <clears throat> because generally if you talk about decarboxylation we discuss the stability of the carbon ion so basically if we have <clears throat> a, a, a carboxylic acid and such questions have been asked in the csr examination before where you have a carboxylic acid and and they ask you what is like they give you three carboxylic acids let's say r and then in this case they have some r dash some other r group over here and then a third and they ask you the rate of decarboxylation okay so in that question basically we see the stability of the carbon ion so wherever the whichever carbon ion is the most stable there their decarboxylation will be the fastest <clears throat> but in this case you have you they are asking you about the mechanistic mechanistic uh, um, principle of this reaction so in case of beta keto acid so what happens is again it goes through a six member transition state and i'll show you over here so what it looks like so this is the transition state you can see that you have oh bond over here of the acid and uh, it, it goes through a six member transition state this attacks this hydrogen this bond breaks over here this bond migrates like this now in this case your hydrogen as you can see is involved in that reaction okay this this bond is involved in the reaction so over here instead of your oh you would have what you would have the od so this there will be a slight you can say change in the rate of the reaction in, if we have oh instead of od in the previous cases you could see that in this case it was not a rate determining step as you can see in the claisen rearrangement okay and in this case this bond was not involved at, at at all in the reaction so it is only plausible that in this particular case there would be slight change in the reaction if we have instead of this oh bond we have the od bond another bit that i wanted to add for some of you who might be still a little confused uh, is that you can also compare this to E1 and E2 reaction, the elimination reactions, right? So in an E1 reaction, what happens? Uh, the rate determining step is the leaving group. Okay, the rate of elimination of the leaving group. That is the rate determining step. That is the formation of the carbocation. If you remember an E1 reaction. So over there, your kinetic isotopic effect does not take place because if you replace the hydrogen with the deuterium, it does not matter because that is not the rate determining step. Whereas in an E2 reaction, the leaving group and the elimination of the hydrogen okay both of them are the both of them are involved in determining the rate of the reaction so in that particular case in the e2 reaction because your hydrogen is also involved it is also playing a role in in, in basically determining the rate of the reaction so that is where your uh, kinetic isotopic effect will take place similarly in the example that we saw where the transition state formation was taking place there your even like initially i had told that it is a carbon hydrogen or a carbon deuterium bond but even if you have a oh bond and an od bond there will be a quite quite a lot of difference in the bond strength of the oh bond and the od bond so there also your deuterium kinetic isotopic effect will take place generally we study for carbon hydrogen and carbon deuterium but it can also be studied for oh and od so here also you can see in the transition state this bond breakage is clearly involved in the reaction okay there is only there is only one step because it's a concerted mechanism and in that one step only your carbon your oxygen hydrogen and oxygen deuterium bond that is getting involved in the reaction right it is very similar to e2 you can compare to e2 in e2 also in, in in the same step both happens that is the carbon hydrogen bond gets broken and the leaving group also basically leaves right is kicked off so in the e2 reaction also um, both the things are happening simultaneously and that is why there also the kinetic isotopy effect takes place because this bond bond is this carbon hydrogen bond is involved in the reaction similarly this oh bond or the od bond in that cyclic transition state in decarboxylation is also involved in the reaction and that is why the kinetic isotopic effect is taking place i hope that makes it clear anyway if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up i will see you in the next video very soon